Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I don't know, dude. Sometimes when you're in a creative rut, it's nice to just get the hell away and I do something different, I suppose. Despite what my therapist says, sometimes it is good to run from my problems. It's been failure after failure for me lately with my photography and I kind of just needed to slow down and try making some work that would actually be good for the portfolio. Luckily, a group of friends that I travel with frequently presented me with the opportunity to do so. That's right, I'd be joining Caleb, Birgit, and David again for another road trip, this time through Wyoming to see what the frontier has to offer. And I swear to Carhartt, we weren't just going to take a picture of this fucking barn. But in order to slow down, sometimes you gotta go really fast. So I hopped on my electric robot explosion horse and uh, hit the road down to LAX. After lane splitting so hard, like Luke Skywalker when he lane split the shit out of the Death Star, I finally arrived at the airport and met up with Kaylee. After catching the electric robot explosion Skyhorse, we finally landed on the open range, the Grand Tetons. And after looking up what that translates to, I felt like this might actually be my kind of place after all. Hey! Four of us are gonna be sandwiched in here for a week. Ooh, yeah, you like those Toyotas? Oh, it's hot. With several hours to kill before uh, David and Birga get in, we hitched our wagons into the park and I was pretty excited to be on the ground and, you know, doing such a good job at B-roll. Grab that. Oh, you're doing such a bad job. Once we were in the park, I knocked out a uh, pretty cool video about shooting some aerochrome in 120 that the one and only Peter McKinnon had sent me. Unfortunately, I f the roll up because that's my brand. So it seemed like I still needed to break free of this uh, photographic rut that I was in. All right, what's up? I just finished shooting some aerochrome. And now we are uh, rejoining the main storyline. How exciting. Anyway, after doing the usual, you know, bare minimum amount of work, we decided it was time to treat ourselves to a little sampling of heart disease. I grabbed one of the three cameras I brought for the trip, the Canon WP-1, and after Caleb got uncomfortably close to me, I loaded up its ass with some ectochrome. It's so weird filming around people. We gotta get used to it. Technically. <laughs> You get that? No. <laughs> After eating enough beans to make sure the rental car would never smell the same ever again, we walked around Jackson Hole for a bit to, you know, kill some time. Unfortunately, we never found a guy named Time, but eventually we did stumble upon the town brothel and decided to pimp some film as I felt my mojo was slowly starting to return to me. This is a pretty good start. This photo is about as good as it gets, at least for me. The colors are perfect, and I just love the, I guess, juxtaposition of this kid, probably bored as hell and slouched over against this like bright, fun, energetic backdrop. I took several other photos, but they never quite hit the mark that I was going for. Truth be told, the WP-1 was kind of acting up and skipping every like two and a half frames. The latch on those things is just, it's hot garbage like your mixtape and is apparently crucial to the operation of this camera. When I opened up the uh, latch compartment on that camera, I found that the latch itself was broken in two different places. So I think mystery solved on that one. Anyway, to deal with the fact that that was malfunctioning left and right, we decided to get beer and overextend our own malfunctioning livers. People need to know you're an asshole. This hotel was pretty cool, and the front door guy let us wander around for a bit after we, you know, gave him cigarettes. Too bad my camera was in the shitter. Ah! So yeah, I kinda want my cigarettes back. With Birga and David almost there and the lighting getting pretty backlit, we headed back into the park and found a scenic turnoff, the perfect chance to pull my Hasselblad back out and pop off some of the chronic. That's right, Camir 400 pushed two stops through a splash of orange, because that's about the only time it looks good. Brands love it when you're a little mean to them. <laughs> Is the parking brake on? No, I can put her on though. 
after making love to the car, I sat down and reviewed my strategy for this trip. It was uh, pretty simple. Two A16 backs for the Hasselblad system meant that I could shoot two different film stocks at any time by simply swapping the backs out. Sounds pretty simple, right? No, bitch. It was not that simple. This strategy leaves a lot of room to uh, to mess things up. When you switch the backs, you gotta change the meter ISO back and forth every time. And if you shoot with filters like I do, you gotta swap them out every time too. Anyway, whatever. Kodak Ektachrome and Kentmere 400 were gonna be the uh, the lookbook for me for this go around. I wonder if that's David and Birger right there. Is it a big ass plane? It sounds like it. Holy sh My battery's dead in the uh, meter. I gotta replace it. This replacement battery is also low, so we're just gonna hand meter for now. F8, 160th. That's kind of nice, actually. There you go. After firing off literally only one mediocre ass shot, we went to go get David and Birgit. Yeehaw, cowboy. With the David and Birgit cargo acquired, we had a ways to go that evening to get up to the uh, the Yellowstone area where we'd essentially kind of start off. But you know, we we're already getting pretty pumped about the light. And by we, I mean David. Damn, boy. This shot is pretty good. It's simple and moody and, you know, what more can you really ask for? I felt like I was finally hitting my groove. I was in a good mood and nothing could possibly go wrong. I definitely just drop my Hasselblad. Might be fine. I don't know, these things are built like tanks, right? With nightfall upon us, we finally reached our place of rest, and so did our upstairs neighbors, I guess. Oh, sick. <laughs> I love that for us. Day two. The next morning, it was time to get our collective sh together. It was time to actually do stuff and not just sit in a car for three hours telling stories from our glorious prom days. <laughs> After grabbing some bean juice, I slapped my ectoprome back on the Hassie and walked around looking for, you know, photographic inspiration. And luckily I found some. Right across the way was an abandoned hotel bar thing, which was totally not strange at all to be sleeping 60 feet away from. This shot is pretty great. I love how layered it is and the colors are, they're fine, I guess. The sky is nice and dark as well as the lake thanks to a polarizer on the front of the lens. It's a nice little detail here with the couple walking their dog too. After all that, it was time to head into Yellowstone, slowly. And I was totally living out my dream pixie, insta-girly travel influencer lifestyle. <laughs> Banger, I can go home. All right, we got everything we needed. Yeah. <laughs> At our uh, first location, we were battling with gorgeous scenery draped in awful midday light. But you can turn midday light into mid-daddy light if you actually know what you're doing. Unfortunately, I don't, but I grabbed some black and white and some color infrared and went searching for it anyway. I 
popped a few shots here and there, but nothing really notable, except maybe this one. I really dig the framing, the colors, and you know, of course the subject matter. Oh my God. Where's Jason? I'm right here, dog. <laughs> oh. As we went along, headed who gives a shit where, we found a herd of bison and collectively decided we wanted to ride them like horsies. After a park ranger on site told us that was the dumbest fucking thing they'd ever heard, we just decided to take pictures from afar instead and totally pretend like that idea was just a joke the whole time. After that, we started to get our first glimpse of the hot springs that characterize Yellowstone like landmines on the western front. I packed the Hassie and some ectochrome for this location. It would almost be sacrilegious to shoot these, you know, beautiful prismatic springs on something like black and white. It's getting destroyed. <laughs> it's such a... All right, now we're heating up, and it's not just the super volcano underneath our feet ready to blow up the world. This shot is pretty good. It's very simple, yet effective, and the colors are fantastic. I don't normally love the color blue in my work, but I think it works pretty well here, you know, darkened dramatically by the polarizer. out of focus, but I got it. <gasps> Did you though? That's Old Faithful. And we missed it. Is he f***ing the tree? Well, you know, it was time to get the most touristy shit out of the way and see Old Faithful do her thing. Here's a shot of some people waiting it out. I really tried hard to be stealthy here and nab this shot, and I think it might be one of the better ones, to be honest. Be back in an hour. But while we wait for Old Faithful, let's cut to commercial break and hear a word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Let's not kid each other. I'm a photographer and you might also be a photographer. And what do photographers do when they own a photography business? They sell prints. So when you go to set up your online print shop, why not make it as easy as possible on yourself and use Squarespace? An all-in-one website building platform with modules custom built to help you build a website and then sell your products even more efficiently. Modules like low stock alerts, memberships, invoice control, and many more allow you to leap into the modern era and set up shop right there on Squarespace, which also includes all the convenient amenities available for customers to purchase items items like credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, and even Afterpay and Clearpay. And best of all, if you run into any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help guides. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase.
essentially. Old Faithful did the thing and, you know, everyone applauded, which is kind of bullshit if you ask me, because when I do the same thing with Diet Sprite in a restaurant, everyone's just kind of annoyed. Let's be honest. At this point, the whole world and their grandma has a shot of Old Faithful and their grandma probably did it better than me. So I kind of wanted to do something different. We tried to park ourselves away from the crowd and find a unique way to photograph the damn thing. Of course, for me, that probably meant color infrared. And you know what? I actually really like the shots, especially this one. The small river here kind of acts as a leading line to the subject itself. And of course the violent red is always a nice, albeit aggressive touch. Fresh out of Ectochrome, it was time for more Ectochrome because, surprise, surprise, I'm not adventurous anymore and the light inside of me is dead. Of the 16 exposure roll of Ectochrome, I got six keepers and, I don't know, maybe one portfolio shot, but that might be kind of a stretch. Jason, what are you putting in the camera today? Good question, Caleb. Today I'm actually loading in some Kodak Ektachrome E100. What does the E stand for on let's a not, bad day? Let's not pretend like we're like this. <laughs> Anyway, missing my Xbox dearly, I was forced to find beauty in whatever this shit was instead. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. I won't lie to you, I've shot here before, but I've never been able to produce a photo that I thought was good. I don't know, the images always come out looking like every photo ever taken at this spot, and that just isn't exactly what I wanted. Here's a shot and it's fine. The colors are popping and, you know, painterly, which is cool, but the ridge line kind of gets lost in the background here. So next, please. This shot is a, a bit of an improvement, I suppose. The colors are also quite nice, but this tree here in the foreground is giving me straight up kidney stones. Got it. That's a pro right there. It's a pro via right there. footage of your you guys' trip. <laughs> that would be the most boring channel. No, people would love it. I don't think so. I, I think, think we so. would be canceled right away. I'm <laughs> over <laughs> Ectochrome back off. Can't mirror back on. All right, what can I say? We got pretty lucky with this one. We just pulled off at some random scenic overlook that would probably look a little bit prettier if there's like a Chili's somewhere in there, but whatever. There was a super cool winding river with the sun positioned perfectly over it and it made the photography kind of a cakewalk. I figured Kentmere would probably get the job done pretty effectively because it can totally bring, you know, high contrast scenes to their knees, like some sort of photon dominatrix. Yeah, this is probably one of the best photos from the trip. It is also currently my phone background. You have to. Oh, okay. The yeah. cat or dog? Okay. okay. Getting up or snooze? Getting up. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Inside or outside? Outside. This is stupid. I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you.
After dinner, the light finally touched down and created this like blue hour of glory next to the lake with no tripod in hand. I settled my, you know, dented and beat up Hassie on the railing and shot a long exposure of the light reflected off the restaurant. And yeah, it's a keeper for sure. This is where slide film prevails, I think, you know, low contrast blue hour. It's almost like a cheat code. And I was totally prepared to, you know, left bumper, right bumper, X, left, right trigger the shit out of it. There's so many fucking mosquitoes out here. How does anybody shoot in these conditions? Want to drive? I'm fine with it. Okay. All right, here clock is in. Let's do it. Day three. The next corning, I mean, morning. Damn, autocorrect. Oh wait, this is an improvised voiceover. There is no autocorrect. So then what the hell just happened there? Oh, hi. I'm shooting more black and white today. Do it, I dare you. Dare me? I dare you. Bitch, I always come through all my dares. <laughs> Whatever. The next morning we were excited to get back out there and see, you know, a bit more of Red Dead Redemption 2, but in real life. I, I looked through some of the like photography related. There's not a lot of photography yeah, related content, that. but there's this one guy from the Midwest who's his subsect is kind of cool. Yeah. They added videos now, and yeah. they added like a separate podcast thing. Yeah, they added video. Yeah, um, yeah. So you it's can, like YouTube. No, you can add video clips, but it's oh, still okay. text based. Is the main thing. Yeah, that's all. Uh, it's not smoke. It's men working. Oh, it's <laughs> we popped in town for a second to pick up supplies, you know, like bear traps, rope, and raccoon hats. It was going to be a pretty wild day. I decided to load up some more ectochrome, the likes of which I was burning through at an impressive or maybe non-impressive speed, depending on how you think the video is going so far. Of the 16 exposures on the last roll of ectochrome, I got about four keepers, but one portfolio shot. Frankly, those numbers are downright awful. I can do better. Well, maybe. I don't know. I do seem to be getting worse. I've been trying to break through I've been dying to be with you And the way the day I sail All right, this shot is balling out. The rest were kind of ass, but this shot is doing something with the colors that just kind of works. I can't quite put my finger on it. Huge shout out to the circular polarizer for cutting down the, uh, you know, the blue sky again. We stopped at Mammoth Hot Springs first off, and this was another location I've shot twice before, but never could quite get it to look good. I don't know why I thought this time would be different, but I brought both color and black and white, and I just decided to let the location speak to me in the moment, which doesn't really mean anything, I guess. No, I guess that wasn't even a secret. That Cut that out of the video. <laughs> I need to clean my filters. Whoa. the shot twice and I don't know I figured it out later the first on black and white and it's fine whatever but then I slapped the ectochrome on and I got this which I think is quite good it's the colors really above anything classic blue and orange complementary colors that trick your eye into thinking you got something magical it's too hot for this right now I don't know if I even got anything good once again, after putting in a minimal amount of work we decided to treat ourselves and go swimming someplace somewhere 
damn, that was so cinematic. But first, a quick cav reveal on this channel, and then, you know, a quick infrared shot. Okay, make it two infrared shots at this waterfall named after what sounds like a pretty bad STD. Anyway, our first geothermal swim spot was closed down because I guess someone tried to cook a whole ass rotisserie chicken down there. Eventually we did find a more secluded spot and I don't know, I mean, what do you do when you're in a park, right? Local, national, or otherwise. That's right, you get naked and drink beer. Doesn't have to be in that order though. Oh god, I'm scared. Oh. Oh, money. Wait. That was cool. Yeah. With good evening light on the way, we hopped in the car and headed to a lake somewhere in the mountains that some locals told us about, which kind of sounds like the premise for any good slasher movie, but uh, what the hell, YOLO. So of the 16 shots of Kent Muir, 400 pushed two stops with an orange filter. I got about eight keepers and one, maybe two portfolio shots, maybe. I can never make up my mind on my own photos. We're at pretty high elevation. Two frames. Zero. Zero. With no time to waste and us being natural time wasters, we headed deeper into the backcountry. What? Oh, good. Oh, I was like, <laughs> that was flames. No, you didn't get it. No, we moved too fast. Didn't have auto exposure. It's not an M7. Thought you were an exposure god. <laughs> Eventually we made it to the lake, but it was kind of uh, in this like valley and the light was more or less gone, like my childhood innocence. Worst. 
Oh yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. Banger. <laughs> That was one fifteenth of a second. <laughs> if I like me or dad, I'm gonna kill myself. This <laughs> is <laughs> so dramatic all the time. Boom! Oh, I mean the sound. The slapper. Oh, that was really bad, actually. That was not good to say. <laughs> it's jumping away. Oh, it's still there. Anyway, after Birgit did a downright filthy Tokyo drift back into the same spot from earlier, just now with even beautifully or lighting, I whipped out the chrome and hoped for the best despite, you know, the low ISO. These photos aren't really of anything worthwhile. The colors are just nice, but that's just one piece of the puzzle oftentimes. With gusto still in our veins, or I guess caffeine, because we don't know when to cut ourselves off, we decided to head back into town and do some night photography. This photo is pretty solid. I do love the colors and of course the detail of the silhouetted tree here back against the, uh, you know, whatever light was left on the horizon. I do wish the green neon wasn't so blown, but I don't know. Sometimes you take what you can get with slide film. And frankly, I wasn't really expecting any of these to turn out. Another lucky one. I do love how the lobby is against this like dark void in the background. You might ask, how does one meter slide film at night like this? F***ing don't ask me. Perhaps the best one of the night. Highlights are a little blown, but to get that blue hour glow in the background, I think it was a little bit worth it. I honestly do not know if any of these shots are gonna turn out. Making it as hard as I possibly can on myself, shooting Ectochrome and uh, doing it with a warming filter. I don't have high expectations for these, but I'm enjoying it. Does that count for anything? Why are so many people like scared of pee? They're fine, they're just hands for your legs. <laughs> <laughs> so should we eat these almonds? Blueberry? It's just the blueberry. Is that what that is? Blueberry? Yeah. Blueberry. God, that sounds terrible. I don't think they would bring something to market that Oh shit god, it smells like blueberry. You already ate one? Actually, those are good. pretty good. <laughs> those are actually really good. No, I don't like it. Whoa. It's like cereal. Yeah. yeah. Slam it. These, these are the extreme ghost pepper ones. Okay. Three out of four hot. The taste is better than the blueberry. There's a spicy dill pickle. pickle. Yeah, you want to try it? Yeah, let's do it. Dill Are pickle. they green? No. Oh, no. Seven, oh, uh. 785. Oh my god, that's disgusting. That's gross. That's, that's so, so gross. What's wrong with you guys? That's just fing amazing. <laughs> I'm on like a uh. 785. I'm on like, like 3 out of 800 I'm pickle flavored oh. things. It tastes even worse with beer. <laughs> How did they even make these blueberry ones? That's crazy. Dude, did they milk the blueberry. Yeah, just like a cat. <laughs> Maybe I just let it hit the back of my throat. I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this one as much. <laughs> All right, this is probably gonna be the hottest. How many fire fire emojis does it have? Four. Four, and it says hottest. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Holy shit! 
<laughs> That's pretty hot. Yeah. Barb was a bad choice. <laughs> F that was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Give daddy some. Great idea, yeah. Jason. <sighs> Your vision's blurry too, right? Day four. Now almond hungover. The next day it was time to continue our brat summer. I don't really know what that means, but yeah, sure, whatever. That day we were saying adios to Yellowstone and heading through the park back to the Grand Tetons. But first we had to stop at this, you know, abandoned rickety ass house we passed the day prior. Being early and half dead or half asleep, I can never tell. I couldn't make up my mind on how to shoot this thing, so I shot it on all formats, a photographic spray and pray technique. But first I needed to pimp slap some ectochrome back into the hassy. Can you uh, unwrap this for me? My finger's f***ed up. <laughs> Of the prior 16 shot roll of E100, I got 10 keepers and three or four portfolio shots. I don't know, those night shots are pretty magical. Speaking of magic, there was none of it in the air that morning. These E100 shots of the house look like bison the likes of which we'd seen, smelled, and admired more than our fair share of in the past few days. The black and white shot was blah as well, but whatever. The infrared shot was probably the best take on it. On our way through, we decided to stop in the park for, you know, one last hurrah. Or at least one more whiff of natural sulfuric ass cheese. I think the color infrared was definitely the shining star here. This shot is pretty damn good. And this shot over here looks like an apocalyptic cursed river of blood, which I think is pretty metal. always points towards civilization. It was a chill day full of lots of driving. We did eventually stop at this lake for a break. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet and didn't even ever know I could rhyme that good ever. Crank it out. Yeah, I can get out, but I'll fall into the lake. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, like a couple of turtles, we eventually realized it was pizza time, and David was very enthusiastic about it. Golly! Yo, this place <laughs> Holy f this looks good. I took a couple of photos here on Ectochrome. I mean, how can you not, right? They just weren't really that good, kind of backlit for the most part. Black and white here would have been the move. Here's one shot, so you know what I mean. Just kind of washed out looking, not very colorful. Yeah, 
Uh, that's a 6x24 camera that David is wielding and I don't know what to tell you. This dude seems to be getting crazier every time I see him. We finally arrived at our Tetons accommodation for the next few days. It was this like cabin on this roadside ranch out in the middle of nowhere where weird sh probably goes down, but we were kind of into it. Wait, there's two twins up there. Ooh, we really are on The Shining. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, well, that just added to the vibe times 50. With the light leaving us physically, not abstractly, we headed out to a pull-off somewhere in the mountains that looked strangely like the Dolomites. Anyway, me looking like the Timu version of Oppenheimer for some reason, I set out to try and find a good enough subject for the shot before the light ran out. This photo is nice. I mean, it's simple. It doesn't really get much simpler than, you know, log in field, but I dig it. I'm sure. Ah, it's too dark. You can dodge and burn it. That's the wrong way to walk, but it's true. <laughs> Flames. Flames. It doesn't really taste like an IPA, no. I wonder if that's why it's popular. Oh, oh, it goes so far back. Well, we have cable TV, so we could watch a movie oh, yeah. on oh. cable TV. Oh, we do? Yeah. Let's see what's on. But we can also play cards. Yeah. Or oh, yeah. talk. Eh. <laughs> David's sleeping quarters. <laughs> Hardcore. The next morning, we decided to wake up at, you know, the gooch of dawn to photograph the molten barn. A very popular photographer's rite of passage, I guess. And that morning, I was definitely looking like whatever the hell that thing was at the end of Alien Romulus. Truth be told, the next day was forecasted to be cloudy, so today was the only day we could shoot it. And us being very lively and peppy people first thing in the morning, we set a reluctant Hell yeah, I guess. It's a wolf, it's a wolf. Oh my God, an actual wolf. Anyway, we got there with time to spare, and yeah, there was definitely no shortage of photographers spouting off their wisdom first thing in the morning. This barn is probably one of the most imaged things in the Tetons, besides the Tetons themselves, so I wasn't really going to be able to do it differently or better than anyone else, but I gave it the old switcheroo anyway and nestled myself in some foliage, kind of like the Bushman of San Francisco, for some cool foreground action. So, was it fart, you know, fine art? Not quite. It kind of leaned more towards shart, you know, shitty art. I mean, it's not terrible. Here's before the sun hit it, and then, you know, after the sun hit it. The colors are definitely a vibe on both, but I'm not sure which one is better. I think both of them are gonna kind of stay out of the portfolio for now on account of it's nothing new to anyone. Yeah, it's 
it's, it's done. I just ran out of film. Yeah. It's gonna be a banger. Just as good. Damn, boy. Flames. <laughs> Fire. Georgetown University. Time to become a, a hassle, hassle bro. Hassle bro. Hassle batty. Hassle batty. <laughs> I do like hassle batty. Speaking of baddies, this shot. I like the tones and what the orange filter did to the sky, creating this almost aura-like glow around the Tetons. The lines cutting parallel through the shot is a nice touch as well. This is layered vertically, like a juicy lasagna dripping in swag sauce. After eating some eggs henny, that is eggs off the heen, because the little hair of the dog never killed anyone, we just decided to head back to the ranch for a little siesta that day. I still had some black and white in the hassy, and I decided to kill the roll and, you know, bury it unceremoniously in an unmarked grave that evening. This photo of the old gas pumps is kind of cool. They look out of place, like two monoliths in the middle of nowhere or something. I guess it helps that Kent Muir pretty much always delivers. Of the 16 exposure roll of Kent Muir 400 pushed two stops with a slice of orange. I got eight keepers and I don't know about any portfolio shots. Actually, maybe this one. It's a vibe. David knows how to do it. That night, we blazed through a new moon as we continued our epic trek through the Twilight Saga. And just like how Bella made a fierce realization about Jacob and his abs. These violent delights have violent ends. We also made a fierce realization about the night sky that evening. It was one of those like super clear night skies where you could see the like faint outline of the Milky Way with your own eyes. So me, being a traitor to my film community, I grabbed my digital camera for some Milky Way long exposures on infrared. It's kind of cool. Maybe more from like a technical perspective though. The red in this image is actually infrared light of which the night sky is apparently just littered with. The next morning we didn't get up to much, but I woke up pissed off and ready to fight like usual, and I guess shoot photos too. So me, itching like a crack addict, I noticed the light piping in from the window next to Birgit's bed was totally killer, so I set up the hassy and, you know, got my fix. It was a slow rollout kind of morning, our last full day out on the range. So we headed into the local town of Du Bois to sit around and ingest stimulants. Du Bois, Du Bois, I don't know how to pronounce it. 
at the coffee shop, we got a really nice recommendation from a local about a viewpoint over the town just down the road. So we decided to go check it out. A nice view is not always a good photo. I've said it a thousand times and maybe even have it tattooed on my ass. Is he telling the truth or is he lying? You'll never know, but maybe, just maybe, a scenic view ain't so bad in a photo of a red truck centers itself in frame for you. It's an okay shot. It would have gone a lot harder on Aerochrome, but it is what it is in a world where it do be like that sometimes. There was an RV there. They pulled up for a, for a split second. Gotta be quick out here on these streets. acquired and us feeling ready to squeeze the day or whatever the phrase is. I don't know, that shit never made sense to me. We headed back to the ranch to grab some stuff before we headed back west to the Tetons. Alright, I'll get my swim trunk and my flippy floppies. Anyway, at the intersection of Shirt and Hella and Wrinkles, we made a stop to shoot some views of the Tetons under, you know, cloudy conditions. I thought there was film in there, because it stopped. Cam here was really the only that I was gonna rock here. Yeah. What is it? I thought you said bear. <laughs> I was like, bro, we should get the fuck out of here. Stop. Back in the park, we had a checklist of items to see before the usual, you know, vacation beer clock. The first of which was this famous log cabin church with views of the mountains. I wasn't expecting much from the color of the surrounding scenery, so I grabbed my infrared and my black and white for the location. No cop, no stop. No cop, no stop, that's right. Turns out it was kind of the right choice. Some of my best shots were about to happen. <laughs> if there's a piece of wisdom I can impart upon you, Okay, kids, if there is no <laughs> you do not ever stop. <laughs> Right off the bat, we're cooking with gas. And what do you know, it's turned into an uncontrollable grease fire. I like this shot. It's layered pretty nicely. The colors are great and this lady is kind of posed almost perfectly. It was another one of those, you know, find the composition and then wait for the moment to happen kind of shots. Eventually I switched back over to black and white and did another pass of the area, looking for new angles like this one on the ass end of the church. I 
I hope you know that I can't actually take a photo from this angle without, uh, without two hands, so it's all for show. Afterwards, we headed to the lake, but we're immediately met with warnings of an incoming sh storm of weather over the mountains. Park ranger just gave us a pretty big entire park storm warning here. Don't want to get struck by lightning. We're going to put a temporary pause on swimming and just hang out in the car for a second. Hopefully it passes pretty quick. With us cowering in the car, we decided to pass the time the way the cowboys did when they had to hunker down. It's totally going to fall out of the <laughs> Anyway, after the light rainstorm that must have been an inside joke by the park rangers or something because frankly, I can piss more fluid ounces than that. We headed to the lake for chill time. You ready? Or whatever. Shock at it, The next morning was sad because it was all over. Time for us to part ways and head back to wherever the hell we came from, hopefully with fresh piping hot portfolio shots, but we certainly didn't know what we got at the time. All we did know is that Adam Scott was on our flight back to LA, so that was kind of cool for us, not really for him, probably. I think I got some good sh on this trip. It was definitely a landscape photography oriented trip, but that's not a bad thing. I've said it 10,000 times, but when you're surrounded by other enthusiastic creatives, your best work oftentimes comes out. It also helps that these people are just about as immature as me oftentimes. So it's kind of a match made in hell. You guys are gross. <laughs> I don't condone this behavior. <laughs> Did the Hassey double back strategy work? I don't know, kind of. Think of it kind of like being robbed by a truck stop hooker. It's gonna suck and then it's gonna suck a lot more later. It was nice carrying one camera with two stocks ready to go, but it was kind of a pain in the ass swapping filters and ISO and settings and so on and so forth. In the future, it would probably make more sense to carry a separate camera loaded with a separate film stock or look, you know what I mean? Or, I don't know, just hire some miserable assistant to carry him around for you, whatever. On to the next one. I don't know when it'll be, but I can't imagine it'll be too long from now. Wink. What does that even mean? That's not a good ending.